City with Lisa and Andrew Berman. We're here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Conference of Presidents and to pay tribute to Malcolm Honline. Say a word to me. What's Malcolm mean to you? He is, you know, everything to the Jewish people and the, the, the effort that he puts out year in and year out for all these for all these years is just something just incredible. But quite frankly, I thought this was tribute was for you. <laughs> You're very sweet. By the way, we, we, we are, the in every Thank room, you. we have CNBC Stocks <laughs> and Shalom TV. I'm very flattered, Andy. Oh. Ron Carner. Hi. You know Malcolm? I know Malcolm very well. Tell, Ma tell, uh, tell us, why is Malcolm so special, Ron? Well, first of all, Malcolm is the, is the number one professional Jewish administrator in the United States. Executive is the better word in the United States. There's nobody more important than Malcolm. He's brilliant. He's, he's, a, he's a kind. He's a really good guy. In fact, it's the Maccabee, the world's third largest international sporting event. Uh, when we marched in Team USA, 1,115 participants from the USA alone, world's third largest games, I asked Malcolm to march in and he marched in right, right with us. And it was such a pleasure to have him there because he's one, one hell of a good guy. He is a very unusual presence on the Jewish scene. There's no doubt about it and we're lucky to have him. And I remember Malcolm from at least 25, 30 years exactly ago right. before he came to the conference. Alan Solo, a former chairman of the President's Conference, say a word to us. What does Malcolm mean to the Jewish world? He means a lot. There is no person I know who with his heart and with his body and with his soul and with his mind is more committed to the Jewish people than Malcolm Honline. And among other things, he's just an inspiration to American Jewish leadership. He's a great teacher, he's a scholar, and he's a leader. And he's made enormous difference over the past 25 years. He's a one of a kind. They broke the mold. So I'm asking everyone, define for me what makes Malcolm so special. Well, Malcolm is more than special. I think Malcolm is a Jewish leader who has redefined the concept in America. It's a combination of ingredients that you can't even put your finger on all of them. Obviously, very high intelligence, uh, an energy level that I think is almost inhuman. Uh, and uh, he was born with a judgment that um, makes him quickly understand how to handle the most difficult situation. And there's a spark of love of the Jewish people in him that applies to all the Jewish people all across the spectrum. Though he himself is in one part of the spectrum in his personal life, Malcolm really loves every Jew. And you put all those things together, even then it's not enough to explain what, what Malcolm Holmline actually is. Working with him so closely for two years, even though I've been one of his best friends for decades, was the greatest privilege I ever had. What a pleasure it is to be standing now with Cantor Joseph Malavani and his wife. What is your name? Beatrice. And with a dear friend, John Ruskay. John, say a word. What has Malcolm meant to American and world Jewry? Well, what Malcolm, the conference, and Malcolm as a leadership, I, he's been a warrior for the state of Israel, the Jewish community, and the Jewish people. Whenever there's crisis, Malcolm is at the very center of mobilizing our community right to left. We have differences in the community, that's fine. But when Israel's in challenge, when the Jewish community is in challenge, there is no one like Malcolm who has brought us together and led us to find ways. I work very closely with Malcolm in all sorts of moments, and there are times he needs to, we all need to do things to bring the whole community together. So this is an incredible model of being there, bringing the community together, and that's why we're here today, to honor that, to, to salute him, to honor this, and to thank him. Beautifully said. Kedem Malavani? I fully salute <laughs> every word. John that said it perfectly, did John, you? John is a... Have you had personal contact often with him? I am a friend of Malcolm for the last 40 years. A, uh, when he was still with Soviet Jewry. Yes. I was always thinking of the biggest demonstration. And then, of course, when he moved to the President's Conference, he uh, always invited me. I always think for them. Hence my, my presence here at the dinner. That's lovely. And as you have watched his career, how would you describe the contribution he makes? Immense. Malcolm, first of all, Malcolm is a consensus person. He knows how to keep people together. He has, he has the capacity to understand everybody, to make everybody feel important, because after all, everybody is a president of an organization so that it works out very well. This beautiful woman here is Millie Maggot. 
an extraordinary presence on the world Jewish scene. You've known Malcolm for a long time, Millie. Yes. Try to put into words what's he meant for Jewish life. Well, he's a wonderful. He's a wonderful leader. Uh, he's an inspirational man. He brings so much strength and most of all unity because he just doesn't go to one side or the other side. Uh, no political affiliation. And I think, I think he's a man who does something that not many people can do to bring unity and everybody together and makes it easy for everybody to, ex to express their feelings and gives us strength to follow and, and do things for the Jewish community. It's wonderful. I'm standing now with one of the foremost leaders of world Jewry, Ron Lauder, who of course has been a chairman of the President's Conference and he's now heading World Jewish Congress and JNF. You've had a long association with Malcolm, Ron. Right. So how will you describe the contribution he's made to Jewish life? Malcolm is unique. He's such a special person. He's a person who you can count on. He understands the issues. But more important, he's the glue that sticks together all the various Jewish groups. And that is a unique thing. And in the, in the world of Jewry, no good deed goes unpunished. There's no one who has done more than you have you. for Jewish life, especially throughout Eastern Europe. Thank you. Was there anything that Malcolm did that you can remember that you say that was a contribution that went even beyond the borders of the United States and yeah. Israel? When we were together in Poland, we were with a lot of very, very old Hungarian Jewish people. At the end, they asked Malcolm to get up and give a speech. He had had about five or six or seven, maybe ten vodkas. And he got up and made a perfect speech in Yiddish. However, there's one thing we forgot to say. Malcolm doesn't speak Yiddish. <laughs> Another great Jewish leader, Jim Tisch. Jim, Jim what, how would you characterize the unique contribution Malcolm has made to Jewish life throughout the world? Michael is uh, the Jewish community's greatest secret weapon. He, he knows everyone, I'm not just saying in New York, in Washington, in Israel, around the world, and he's able to quietly use all the connections he has to connect the dots for the Jewish people and on behalf of the Jewish people. He really is a great Jewish civil servant. Another wonderful Jewish leader, dear friend, former chairman of the President's Conference and now heads the America-Israel Friendship League, Ken Bialkin. Ken, you've known Malcolm Holmland a long time. How has he made a difference in Jewish life? I was the chairman of the Conference of Presidents when my beloved executive director, Yehuda Hellman, died one day. Uh, and so it fell to me to find the replacement. I heard of this guy, Malcolm Holmland, and, and nobody could be as good people as people said he was. But he was talking to Federation, he was talking to the JCRC, he was talking to the UJA, and somehow I either blackmailed him or blackjacked him, but um, he came to work for the conference, and he's been working at the conference ever since. More than 25 years, Ken. Yes, and if anybody can make a difference with his own personality, with the vision that he brings, with the love of the Jewish people and the understanding of the world community, it's Malcolm Honline. We're blessed to have him. I hope we have him for another 120 years. So we really have you to thank for Malcolm. Well, well, it's only 25 years. <laughs> you have either me to thank or to blame. Let's wait and see. <laughs> another wonderful Jewish leader who has made a contribution to Jewish life for years and years and years. And I had the privilege of knowing Seymour Reich long, long time ago when L'Chaim first started. You were a past chairman of the Conference of Presidents. You've yes, known Malcolm. Yes, indeed. How would you characterize the unique contribution he's made to Jewish life? Malcolm? Malcolm probably knows every leader in the world, every king, every president, whether in the United States, uh, here he's very active. He's got his hands and everything to the credit of the conference. It, was there any specific event, moment, that you felt he helped you or you saw him do something special for either Israel or World Jewry? Yes, indeed. There was a very quiet effort uh, that uh, President uh, George Bush, 41, 
uh, brought about, which is the freeing of the Syrian Jews. 4,000 Syrian Jews were let out quietly. Uh, Malcolm played a very important role in that. They resettled in Canada, the United States, and Mexico, and many went to Israel. That was a momentous event in Malcolm's career. I have the great pleasure of speaking with Edita Harda, Harda, who is the Czech ambassador to the United Nations. And you're here tonight celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Conference of Presidents and paying tribute to Malcolm Honline. From your perspective, can you speak for a moment about what you think the Conference of Presidents of major American Jewish organizations has done in some way to better the world as a whole? Oh. <laughs> I think it's very important uh, if the organization and the most important people, uh, Jewish people, are coming together and working together. Because, of course, it's a very delicate situation for uh, Jewish people and for Israel. And you know that the Czech Republic is a great friend from Israel. My president just had been to Israel, had spoken with all the ministers, with the president. And, of course, when we can, as Czech Republic, help, even here, even at the UN, it's a pleasure for us to do it. We wish you all the best and thank you for your years of service and the wonderful friendship between our two countries, Israel, Czech Republic, and also the United States of America. Yeah, of course it is, because we have so big tradition. We had so many Jewish people in our country. Nobody of us knows who was Jewish yes. in the past. And really, it's a great relation between the two countries. It's been an honor speaking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. I'm standing here with someone who is the first lady of the Jewish world and has made a contribution to Jewish life in America, in Israel, and throughout the world, Shoshana Cardin. You were, by the way, a past chairman of the President's Conference. You know Malcolm for a long time. Very long time. Shoshana, how would you characterize his uniqueness and the contribution he's made to Jewish life? I think he has an encyclopedic memory. Uh, he is able to recall and explain what happened in many, many instances where people don't even recall that they took place. Um, and in addition to his memory, he has a great sense of humor. Yes, he does. A wonderful sense of humor. And he, he is comfortable with people, and people are comfortable with him. That's his biggest trait. People are very comfortable with him. I am always moved by the way he loves the entire Jewish people. It's not just the state of Israel, it's not American no. Jewry, the Jewish people. Jewish Do you people. agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. He loves the Jewish people. He loves being Jewish. <laughs> he loves the Jewish people. And it's a pleasure to know him. A great pleasure to know him. And an honor. An honor to be able to say I'm a friend. It's an honor to stand next to you. <laughs> Call Tuva Hatzlachal, and may you have many years of health and happiness. And it's lovely to see you here. You and I go back a long, long way, way, and it's a pleasure standing next to you. It's my pleasure. Shoshana Cardin. Another former chairman of the President's Conference, Julie Berman. Rabbi Berman has done extraordinary work on behalf of World Jewry, and you've spent many, many long years, good years, with Malcolm Honline. Would you please give us a sense of what you think his unique contribution is to Jewish life? Well, firstly, he's unique because he remembers everybody's name. <laughs> and if you want to cater to politicians, you have to do that. Secondly, he's always shiny on the spot. He'll never not respond and say, let me think about it for a moment, because he's always ready to think. His mind is unbelievable. And listen, it's a, how do I put it? It's a limited agenda, namely the state of Israel and its inhabitants. And from that perspective, he lives it. It's 24-7, not 24-6, 24-7, even when he's in Shul Shabbos, listening to his Torah, his mind is buzzing and buzzing. And um, he's God's gift to uh, the Jewish community. He's been really great. As you have been also, Jules, thank you so much. So we're talking about all those who've done marvelous things for the Jewish world. None has done more than this man right here. You know him on Shalom TV. He's the head of the New York Board of Rabbis, and he's also one of the outstanding rabbis on the American Jewish scene, Joe Potasnik. And you have known Malcolm for years and years and years. How would you characterize both him as a person and the contribution he's made to Jewish life? I think Malcolm is able to separate the individual from the group and to say, all of us need to put our denomination aside, our affiliation aside, 
and recognize that we're all members of the Jewish people and proud members of the Jewish people. And thankfully, there's a president's conference that can come together and say we are equals and also representatives of the Jewish community to the White House, to world authorities. And I think it's an opportunity for us to say thank you, America, for showing that this door is open to all of us and we can be Jews without fear of persecution in this country. It's a great place for all of us. I'm standing with a very special person here, Rabbi Levi Shem Tov, who basically is the rabbi at the White House. And here you are now celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Conference of Presidents. We're paying special tribute to Malcolm Honline. How would you describe the contribution that both the conference has made and the uniqueness of Malcolm Honline? Very hard to describe, but the Conference of Presidents brings uh, various groups together, which is one impossibility, um, is able to um, extend its wingspan from uh, one side of the aisle to the other through its leadership. Um, we welcome and have the chairs of the Conference of Presidents coming to Washington all the time. Uh, we've actually had them speak at some of our conferences. We honored Mort Zuckerman one year and Malcolm came down for that. Uh, it's, it's an important entity and it's one that doesn't always have everything it accomplishes be known because that's the nature of its business. But um, it's been a voice, a good voice. Uh, we all remember the historic moment with Shoshana Cardin. Uh, we remember the other um, stalwarts, Ambassador Lauder, I mentioned Ward Zuckerman, Mel Sorb, everyone, Richard Stone, uh, everyone in their own way. Malcolm, of course, is the one who sews it all together. But I'm one of the people in this room that can say that I knew Malcolm when it was still a big deal that he knew us because he lived down the block from us in Philadelphia. And his mother taught all the children in my family how to read Hebrew in kindergarten. Uh, everyone knows Malcolm. Very few people in this room or that interact with Malcolm or the conference know his parents. His parents were very special people. Post-World post War II um, German Jews. They were Yekas, we were Chassidish. We came from different backgrounds. But uh, today, it's a flourishing community. They were one of the few pioneers who made sure that from life, traditional Jewish life would survive and not dissipate because it was so unpopular back then. And uh, she was a stalwart. His mother particularly, I remember, and his father, very, very prominent people in the community. And it's great to see uh, what he has carried forward from them. It's just sad they can't be here to watch. But you know how we believe. They are watching. Yeah. Lady Shem Tov, thank you so much. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Another extraordinary individual here who is attending the 50th anniversary of the Conference of Presidents, Scott Shea, who has made a contribution of his own to Jewish life, and you've seen him often on Shalom TV. You. Scott, you've known Malcolm a long time. I have. How would you identify the unique contribution Malcolm has made to Jewish life? Malcolm is one of the few people that is respected on both sides of the aisle. When I'm in con when I'm at Congress or in the administration, it is amazing. I have never heard a negative word about Malcolm. And I, I can't really think of another person in the Jewish world who sort of everybody realizes is a voice of reason and is someone they can go to to really get a a pulse on the Jewish community and what they really think of. It's just, he's just a, he's an invaluable resource. If there weren't a Malcolm, we'd have to invent him. So with Ose Shalom in the background, I'm standing with again a guy who's made an enormous contribution to Jewish life, Jeff Wiesenfeld. So Jeff, you've known Malcolm a long time. About 30, How do you characterize 34 years, 34 since years. I was a teenager, actually. Before he comes to the conference of president. I, 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 you know, there's sometimes you worry about succession. You know, Malcolm is the single most capable individual in organized Jewish life ever. And God should give him a lot of strength. And I hope that when he feels it's the right time that he knows who to mentor because things are only getting more difficult for us and his talents must be transmitted. I hope they're not thoroughly unique. No one has been as close, been able to see him up close as you. Tell me, what is it about Malcolm Honline that makes him such an unusual leader on the American and world you have seen? Well, I think it's passion, okay? It's understanding who we are, what we believe in, and what's at stake. Some people have to learn it. He imbibed it from his environment, from his history, from his yeshiva, from his faith. And it's passion. Where the passion comes, every one of us has a different source. 
His source was Yiddishkeit, the upbringing, and to him there isn't a question what we need to do and where we need to stand. And that's He's done extraordinary work, yes? Absolutely, absolutely. My grandchildren are the reason we are here. Your grandchildren are the reason we are here. Because they represent the continuity, the commitment to the things that we care about. Human beings are the only species that relates to a third generation. Many animals relate to their children, but very few to their grandchildren. For us, this is very special. My grandparents couldn't have been here because they died in Auschwitz and other camps. My grandchildren are the ultimate answer to those who sought to deny us a future and those to die today who seek to deny us even a past. They know if you cut off our past, you cut off our future. I worry about the kind of world they will live in and my obligation to provide a safe and secure future for them and for all children. I'm grateful for all those who offered to speak, but I felt, as Bob suggested, that their message would ring stronger, not about me, and this is not about me. This is about an amazing group of people that any community would be proud to point to as their leaders. Look at them, and we should extol them. Too easy it is to knock and denigrate those who sacrificed so much, two years of their lives and more, and continue to be involved. Our generation will hold us to account for what we do or for what we fail to do. Martin Luther King said, we won't be judged by the attacks of our enemies, but by the silence of our friends. It's what we do. It's the lessons that we learned from the past, the lessons of the 50 years of the conference. When we first launched this dinner, I have to tell you that we were very skeptical. We thought, would we get 400 people, 500 people? Who would have thought 1,200 people and we had to turn away many? And not one of you, no one knew what the program would be. You came because you cared. You came because you understood what the conference is about. And we're still a few hundred thousand short of our ultimate goal, so those who see those notes. But more importantly, we want you to be involved. When I suggested this, I will tell you this briefly. Jerry Gershom of the Friends of the IDF saw me at a dinner and he said, you guys can't handle it. We'll handle the arrangements. John Ruskay of UJ Federation said, we'll help you out. Israel Bonds, so many others, people who volunteered. Old staff, Heather T uh, Jacobson and Malki Tannenbaum came back and joined under the leadership of Carolyn, who's responsible for all of the things that happened in the conference, together with Jill and Ilana and Alexandra and Sam and our ultimate volunteers and, and Lara, our intern, and Alora, our intern, and Judy Shapiro, and Rabbi Myers. I met him. Uh, he's afraid I skipped Carol and he didn't hear the first part. Um, that is the whole conference staff. And the money we raise is not going to raise that staff. We're going to be lean and mean. It's going to go to the projects to assure a better future. When the Cayleys and Renards responded as they did immediately, it inspired us. When others came and volunteered and helped us and gave us advice in designing the invitations to all the other aspects, and we will thank them all a little bit later, the idea of this program came to fruition. It says a lot about this generation. We see the headlines that criticize. This puts a lie to it. We are united. We are one. Despite our differences, we understand our responsibilities to the past and we understand our responsibilities to the future. Each of us can change the world. The leaders behind us did it in small and big ways, ways that we cannot show you on the screen. You've heard from some, you will hear from some other remarkable people, including a leader of the Coptic community came to be with us tonight because very few people are standing up and saying never again when Christians are massacred across the Middle East. The Conference of Presidents does. And we speak up for others because we want them to speak up for us. That's what never again means. As Joe Lieberman pointed out, it's not a hollow phrase. It's a pledge to our children and our grandchildren that we will learn the lessons of the past so they will have a better future. What an extraordinary night in your honor and in honor of the Conference of Presidents. I was so moved for you. I was so happy for you. What was it like for you? You know, in a room there celebrating the conference and you, your grandson speaking and basically introducing you. 
what did it feel like? Truth is, I'm not even sure yet because we're still absorbing it all. We had worked so hard for so many months. We don't have infrastructure. We have no fundraising departments. We have nothing. We relied on many friends and member organizations who came through for us and helped us. But frankly, the spirit, the, the reaction of people saying this was the most magical night, amazing night, because what's important to me is not just what happened there, but what do people take away? Does it encourage people to get involved who, who were not involved before? Does it say to them, I have to raise the level of my mom, I have to look at this and see what is my responsibility to my grandparents and my grandchildren? Because the theme of strength through unity really is a prescription for success for our community. So what's most exciting for me, George Bush was exciting, Ban Ki-moon was exciting, my grandchildren most exciting, but really it's what the takeaway was and the reaction that we're getting in hundreds and hundreds, and it's literally of emails, messages, even from George Bush. Well, I am so happy for you. And by the way, many people thought that what you said on your L'Chaim interview was one of the best articulations of the President's conference. I'm very grateful that you gave me this time. I've heard an and amazing I, reaction to it also. And I also want everybody to understand, you know, people take for granted the work that is done and think it just happens. And in the reality of the world, we all need funds to make what we do possible. The President's Conference is a non-profit organization. Very and much people should understand if they appreciate the work you do, if they appreciate the leadership you and the conference provide as we interface with the White House, as we interface, as you represent the State of Israel to American Jewry, one of the things our audience, the Jewish community of Shalom TV and the Jewish community throughout the world should understand, one of the things they should be giving to is your organization so that you can continue the work you're doing. And I wish you kol tufa hastakha. You are out of this world, Malcolm. Thank you. And the second check they write to Shalom TV so we can keep this service on the air. Thank we you. need it. The conference needs it. The Jewish community needs it. The American people need to have a place where they can get the information they get on Shalom TV. Thank you very, very much. Malcolm Holman. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support Shalom TV with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the Shalom TV website homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive on DVD with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.